Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to work with an advocate and then what it's like to have an attorney representing you when you're at court? Sure, yeah. So advocates can provide safety planning resources, emotional support. They can, um, oftentimes in our experience, the advocates are the ones that have accompanied the survivor to court to start the process, to, to help them fill out the complaint and to uh, wait with them at the courthouse if need be. Advocates are different than attorneys. They can't give legal advice. So um, that's an important distinction, but they can provide a lot of other really helpful support and resources to survivors. And then as you had mentioned, our referrals to Pine Tree often and do come from the advocates. And so the advocates, if they are supporting the survivor, can often accompany them to court. And if they meet them at the courthouse, they may have a plan for where they're going to meet and check in and just kind of make sure that they're feeling safe and comfortable as best they can throughout that process and can even go into the courtroom with them. I think you might have mentioned this, uh, but the 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 advocate can't speak on the survivor's behalf in court, so they can't conduct a hearing in the same way that an attorney would be able to, but they may be able to, a survivor may be able to ask that their advocate sit next to them um, during the hearing or at least be present in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. And with an attorney, and you mentioned this, the attorney can assist at the stages of sometimes filing. We do sometimes assist with pre-filing consultations so that somebody who is not sure whether it's the right decision can discuss that with an attorney. And then when we go to court with a survivor, we are doing our best to make sure they feel comfortable trying to, if we can, locate a safe space that's sort of separate and apart from where the defendant might be. Often there's conference rooms in some of the courthouses, and so we try to just find a space where we have some privacy and we can talk. And then the attorney can often go in and do the docket call, the negotiations, and as much as possible limit the necessity of the survivor to be in the courtroom um, with the defendant. Like you said, if there's a hearing, then they would need to be in the same courtroom at that time. But uh, the attorney can help by asking the questions for direct examination, um, asking the questions of any witnesses the survivor may have, and then also cross-examining the defendant and any witnesses that they might have as well. So there's, they both have really important roles in the process. Yeah, and I think if for whatever reason you, a survivor doesn't have an advocate or doesn't have an attorney, there are a lot of people who get protection orders without having either one. Yes. Um, so it's certainly not impossible to get a protection order if you don't have the support of an advocate or an attorney. Um, I think advocates spend as much, probably as much time in court as we do, right? And so they're really familiar with the court process and they can give a lot of information to the survivor. Um, and advocates often successfully negotiate orders for people. Um, so a lot of times they're, they're doing most of the things that we are as an attorney, but I think um, if you are in a position where, especially if you have evidence in your case, right? I think if you have photographs or text messages or other witnesses that you think need to be called, it can be really helpful to have an attorney to help you prepare those pieces for a hearing um, and to conduct a hearing if one is going to happen in your case. Um, so reaching out to one of the hotlines or to your local agency, your local sexual assault agency and getting connected to an advocate is a great first step because as we talked about, advocates are extremely familiar with the process. And so having the advocate with you at each step of the way, they can often go with you for the first step to help you file for the court paperwork and, um, and get that temporary order and then be with you at the final hearing date um, and do a lot of things on your behalf in terms of negotiating and giving you information about the process. Um, and I think probably most people's best case scenario, they could refer you to an attorney so that you have full legal representation on that final hearing date. Um, so there is a lot of support available. I think we've given a lot of information and there is also um, a couple of sources of information. So I think, um, if you're somebody who reading more about the process and educating yourself, um, 
makes you feel less anxious about it. Um, there's a lot of information on the Pine Tree Legal website. We have videos um, and we have information. Um, there's a lot of information on the Sexual Assault Agency's website and the court puts out a guide as well that um, describes the protection order process. So all of those are things that you can read um, if that will make you feel better. If you're the type of person who feels better having somebody with you to support you, um, then getting connected to an advocate and hopefully an attorney um, is also an option. You can do both of those um, or you can pick. Um, I think a lot of times survivors know for themselves, I'm the type of person who I'm gonna feel better if I have a lot of information and I wanna read all these things, I wanna ask a lot of questions, um, or I just wanna have somebody there with me breaking it down piece by piece. I just wanna know what's gonna happen, what's the next step and you know, I don't wanna know 10 steps down the road what's going to happen. Um, so just knowing for yourself which which kind of category you fall in and um, either getting all that information so that you can be aware of the whole process or working with an advocate to help break it down and, and make it a step-by-step -step process as much as possible.